Hey, welcome to our YouTube channel. Thank you so much for stopping by. Our prayer today is that God would speak to your heart and he would change your life as you listen to this message. So sit back, open up your heart, your mind, and your ears, and let God speak to you today. I want you to get your Bible, turn to 1 Peter chapter 3, verse 14. I'm going to talk about a, a subject for the next few minutes that is, I, I'm just going to say it straight up, it's not a fun one. Um, but it's very necessary. It's not a popular subject among today's church because it's something that we would really like to preach and pray against, yet it remains uh, a vital part of our of our faith and our walk with Jesus. It's, what we're going to talk about today is as necessary to our growth as anything I can think of. Um, so I was reading this week a story about a, a newspaper writer who thought he had a really good story for his editor, so he called it in. He said, I got a story to put in the paper. And, and the editor said, okay, what is it? And he said, well, he said, I'm over here. And he said, this, uh, this truck has popped out of gear and has rolled down a hill and crashed into a house. And the editor said, well, I don't find that very interesting, and I don't think I want to write it. He said, we're not going to put that in the paper, and let's just move on to something else. And the, the writer said, well, I'm really shocked to hear you being that uh, uncaring about this particular situation. And the editor said, why would I care? He said, because the truck ran into your house. And that makes all the difference when it's you, doesn't it? So, when suffering happens to someone else, if you're a kind person at all, you empathize. But when suffering happens to you, it changes your life. It's, it's not so easy to just say, wow, I'm sorry for your problem, Boy, I'll pray for you when I think about it. I have noticed when I am suffering that I pray a lot. Did you hear that? When I'm suffering, I pray a lot. And my prayers are always consisting of me praying that my suffering would go away. Because I am somewhat intelligent. And I don't know anybody who prays to suffer. You know anybody that does that? Oh God, would you inflict some horrific disease on me? Oh God, would you break my car and burn my house and maim my children so that I can suffer? I don't know anybody that's rational, intelligent, who ever invited suffering into their life. And I wonder if it's necessary. Couldn't we learn what suffering teaches us through some other method? I don't know. These words were found pinned on the wall of a prison cell in Europe. I don't know who wrote them, but I thought they were interesting. Someone there at some point suffering wrote these words. I believe in love even when I don't feel it. I believe in God even when he is silent. Is that what suffering teaches us? Charles Spurgeon, he had a plaque on his bedroom wall and it had the scripture Isaiah 48.10 on the plaque. And that scripture says, I have chosen thee in the furnace of affliction. And he, he, he wrote the following words uh, in, con in connection with those with that verse. This was his take on it. He said... It is no mean thing to be chosen of God. God's choice makes chosen men choice men. We are chosen not in the palace but in the furnace. Because in the furnace beauty is marred and fashion is destroyed. And strength is melted and glory is consumed. Yet here eternal love reveals its secrets and declares its choice. I want you to look with me, if you would, at our text today, which is 1 Peter chapter 3, starting in verse 14. 
It says, even if you have to suffer for doing good things, God will bless you. So stop being afraid. Don't worry about what people might do. Honor Christ. Let him be the Lord of your life and always be ready to give an answer when someone asks you about your hope. Give a kind and respectful answer and keep your conscience clear. This way you will make people ashamed for saying bad things about your conduct as a follower of Christ. You're better off to obey God and suffer for doing right than to suffer for doing wrong. And beside that I wrote better off? Question mark. Better off? You're better off to obey God and suffer for doing right than to suffer for doing wrong, which suggests something to me. It sounds to me like I'm going to suffer either way. But one way, I'm better off. But I'm still suffering. Hmm. And Peter then goes in, this, in these verses to, to giving us uh, advice on what to do when you're in that season of suffering. It's pretty good stuff. Get your pen, your paper, write these down. But before we get to the advice, I, I want to make you aware of the promise. This isn't... The, the, the promise of Peter to the church, this is the promise of God to the church. Even if you have to suffer, in verse 14, for doing good things, you ought to underline this, God will bless you. That's why you're better off for suffering for doing something good than suffering for something bad, because if you did something bad and you suffered, you don't get blessed. But if you're suffering for the cause of Christ... For the name of Christ, for the benefit of his kingdom, then the promise to you is God will bless you. But the question to that is, how? I don't know. When? I don't know. Unfortunately, the answer is not in these verses. It may be found somewhere in scripture, but I made a promise here that he's going to bless me. I just don't know how and I don't know when. So those of you that are suffering, that were like, okay, I'm suffering, but this was sounding good because he's saying I'm going to get a blessing and he's getting ready to tell me when this is going to be over and how it's going to be over. And I don't have that answer for you. I just have the promise. Don't know when, don't know how, but I know that God's going to bless you because he said he would. So all that I can really give you today in the, in the form of solace are six bits of advice. This is what you can focus on during this season of suffering. Are you ready? You ready to write them down? You could walk right down those verses and you can see them. The first thing he says is this. Number one, stop being afraid. Well, that's easier said than done, isn't it? Choose faith, not fear. Because that's your choice in this. As the child of God, you have the right to make choices. Fear is paralyzing. But faith is energizing. So choose faith. It takes faith to stop the fear. Stop being afraid means that you in faith must choose to stop being afraid. Circumstances tell me I should be afraid. It's normal to be afraid. It's logical and rational to be afraid. It doesn't look good so it makes no sense not to be afraid but God tells me that I can choose faith over fear so that I can say in faith even though this looks bad and even though I can't see any way that this could get better I don't see how this is ever going to end up well God says in faith I can choose to believe that and even in this season of what 
the enemy might have meant to paralyze me, I instead will walk through it energized. Choose faith, not fear. Stop being afraid. Number two, don't worry about what might happen. Because we are bad about that. Aren't we? This might be, and we start researching and we start Googling and we start talking to other people. Indirectly, we say things to people like, hey, have you ever heard about somebody having a dent in the side of their head? Yeah, I had a buddy like that. Turns out he was crazy and he died. And then you go home and you're like, oh, I'm crazy and I'm going to die. I mean, we have a tendency of dwelling on what might happen. And the truth of the matter is what might happen might not. And in most cases probably won't. An old writing. The guy's name was B.M. Launderville. And he wrote this. And so, it's so good. He says... The vine clings to the oak during the fiercest of storms. Although the violence of nature may uproot the oak, twining tendrils still cling to it. If the vine is on the side opposite the wind, the great oak is its protection. If it's on the exposed side, the tempest only presses it closer to the trunk. In some of the storms of life, God intervenes and shelters us, while in others he allows us to be exposed so that we will be pressed more closely to him. I wrote my own little note to that. I wrote, regardless of which side of the tree you're on, remember, it's God's tree, God's storm, and you're God's child. And this will come out as he intends it for you. And worry changes nothing. And all it does is drain your energy and productivity during that season. If you allow worry to consume you, you will do nothing during that season. But fret, worry, doubt, cry, and pray prayers that even though God is concerned about and hears are somewhat ineffective... Because until he's ready for this season to end, you can pray for it to end all you want. So the choice is yours then to choose faith over fear and not to worry. Not going to allow myself to be drained of my energy and my ability to produce. Number three. He says, honor Christ. When? All the way through it. Remember, here's what you need to remember about suffering. God is good. Did you hear that? You need to remember, God is good, and this is not about what you deserve or don't deserve. We got to get that in our spirit. Because immediately when we are suffering, we begin to start thinking, I must have done something. Well, it's a natural thing to do. And once you run that full check and realize that you can't find any sin, you can't find any fault, then there must be another reason. Now, if you find the sin and you find the fault, then you don't get to go any further till you deal with that. But once you get past all of that and you realize, I am suffering... And it's not for anything that I have done bad. Then you realize this suffering is not about what I deserve or don't deserve. In fact, some of y'all, some of you, not a lot, but some of you remember Bob Hope. He made this statement years ago at an an award ceremony. He was being given an award and he stood up and he said, I don't deserve this. But then again, I have arthritis and I don't deserve that either. Very rarely do we deserve the good we get. Very rarely do we deserve the bad. But we get them both. And God is still good. And God is still in control. 
And God still has a purpose. And God is going to bless you. So what the choice is, I'm going to choose faith over fear. I'm not going to worry. And I'm going to honor Christ all the way through this. And number four, I'm going to make him Lord. Wow, that is a choice and an action right there. I'm not just going to call him Savior and then pray to him to fix everything for me like a genie. I'm going to make him Lord. So when you make someone Lord, you make them boss. When you make someone Lord, you take your hands off of what you gave them and now it's there. So in this case, we are giving him our life. We are giving him our soul. Uh, we have... We have invited him into our heart to be our Savior. We have asked him to be our Savior and our Lord. So now he has saved us and he has taken control of our life. So now our life goes where he wants it to go. We do what he wants us to do. We say what he wants us to say. And wherever, that, wherever this can be the most effective in the purpose of his kingdom, that's where this will go when I have made him Lord. That will take me through really pretty places and really scary places. But all of them are necessary in ways that I may never know. I've got to make him Lord. Those who know the path to God can find it in the dark. If he's the Lord of your life, you're never going to be lost and you're never going to be alone. If he's not, you are. So you have to make a decision. How do I want to go through suffering? Do I want to go through it by myself or do I want to go through it with God? If I want to go through it with God, then I, I got to make him Lord. And number five... I've got to stay ready to share my hope. Now, every one of these, if you're walking down that scripture, you're seeing I'm just taking them straight from those verses. I'm just walking down and just pulling those right out of those verses. Stay ready to share your hope. Helen Keller, she said this years and years ago. She said, although the world is full of suffering, it is also full of the overcoming of it. Amen. So, so we have to be prepared to give God praise through this and when it's over. Because all along... We have to stay ready to share our hope. When you're in the midst of the suffering, you don't always feel like you have a lot of hope. But you have to stay ready to share your hope. Because God says the blessing's coming. Someday the season's over. When the season is finished, you got to be ready to share your hope with someone else. Look what God did. Look how long we went through this. Look how we suffered. Look at what a tragedy or what a, 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 a time of grief that was. But then look where we are today. Amen? And every one of us have those stories. So Pete's given us some good stuff here to think about. And the last one is this. He says, keep your conscience clear. Someone asked C.S. Lewis years ago, he said, why do the righteous suffer? His answer was, why not? They're the only ones that can take it. And what does he mean by that? I think it's because when you refer to the righteous, you're most of the time referring to people who have been serving him a long time, that know God, they know him, they've walked with him, they've been through different valleys and situations. The righteous are able to suffer because... They're able to boil it down. When you become, finally, I don't know. I don't know if I'll ever get there or not. But I have to say, I hope. And I, and I think, and I think I'm getting there to that place where when you're that righteous person and suffering comes to your life, you're, you're able to deal with that because you know that it wasn't sin or stupidity, either one, that brought this on. It was something much more significant. I believe we get to that place, that, that place of righteous living where that, you know, initially as we're younger, when, we, when we're younger and we suffer, we always think we must have done it or, or we always think God must be mad at us or we think the devil's attacked. But when we get to that place of maturity, we realize, okay, suffering is a part of life. Our God, our Jesus in Isaiah 53 was known as a man of suffering. Our Jesus suffered. 
So we're going to suffer. So I want to reach that place of maturity so that when I suffer, the first thing that comes to my mind is always going to be, did I do it? Am I? But I want to get to that place where I'm able to say, it wasn't anything that I did or didn't do. It was God using this for whatever purpose. I can live with that. I want you to consider this thought. We're wrapping this up. On the day that Jesus was crucified, there were three men on crosses. I want you to think about this. One of them was a thief. One of them was a repentant sinner. One of them was God in the flesh. Two of them deserved to be there. One of them absolutely did not. But nonetheless, all three of them were on the same kind of crosses that day. One of them died lost. One of them died saved. One of them died and rose again. But they all three that day were on the same crosses, suffering the same shame, humiliation, and degradation of being crucified in the most humiliating way that the Romans could think to do it. All three. Two for what they'd done. One for nothing he'd ever done. All three on the same crosses. Everybody suffers at some point in this life. Even if you're Jesus, you don't get to escape suffering. So I don't have a book today or a message today to tell you how to escape suffering. If I wrote that book, I'd be a false prophet. I'd be a guy just trying to sell books and people would lap them up. I could sell that book. The book about how you never get sick, how you always have lots of money, how that nobody in your family ever passes away. The book on how you can have heaven right here on earth. Man, I could sell that book. But what good would it do me in hell? Because that's not reality. That's not truth. That's not the word of God. The word of God says, we shall all suffer. Jesus said, if you want to follow me, you got to deny yourself, take up your cross and follow me. Consider the cost, he says. You want to follow me? It's not easy. You want to be one of mine? I don't even have a place to lay my head. You sure you want to follow me? Go sell everything you have and give it to the poor. No, I don't want to. I mean, I'm talking about Jesus never made this easy. It's not easy, but it's the only way. There's nothing about this life that is easy. Easy. With or without Jesus. But the word says, with Jesus, you are better off. Remember that from the beginning? All will suffer, but some are better off in their suffering. Because they suffer with Jesus next to them. That mighty oak to which we, the trellis, are, are gripping, clinging to. And regardless of how the storms go or the winds blow, we just keep hanging on tight. If it's hitting us on the back, it's hitting us from the front, where, whatever's going on, we're just hanging on. Because the scripture says that this season, though it may seem like it will never end when you're in it, this season will come to an end, and at the end of the season, God will bless you. You got a blessing coming. Every person in this room that's suffering right now, let that be your joy. You say, today? I don't know about today. Tomorrow? I don't know. But the scripture says you got a blessing coming. So you better start writing your testimony according to point number six. Get ready to share your hope, the reason of your hope. You better get ready.
Those of you that are suffering right now, you need to go home today and you need to write out, you need to start writing something that says, and you don't write when I get healed, this is what I'm going to say. You need to start writing today. I want to thank God because I went through this situation. How about if you were the little lady in the scripture with the 12 years of the issue of blood? Long about the 10th year, she probably thought this is never going to end any way except in death. The 11th year, same thing. All the way up until the point of her healing. But what a powerful testimony. You can get ahead of that by saying, I'm going to start writing my hope down right now. I'm going to start writing my testimony right now. Lord, I trust you with my life. I'm yours. I'm not my own. I'm bought with a price. You can do with me whatever you want. But Lord, I believe your word. I'm going to choose faith, not fear. I'm not going to worry. I'm going to honor Christ. I'm going to make you Lord of my life. I'm going to go wherever you want me to go. I'm going to start getting ready to share my story right now. I'm going to start writing down what I'm going to say when I come through this. The only thing I haven't given you yet is a definition of the word suffering. And so I want to conclude with, with this. This isn't, this isn't from a dictionary anywhere. This is just out of my heart so you could write your own. I wrote, to suffer is to experience pain. Pain past the ability to endure it normally. It's more than just an irritation. It's an ongoing with no end in sight disruption of the ability to live normally. Suffering drains your energy, saps your vitality, holds captive your focus. It's not forever, even when it seems it may be. But even if being allowed by God for a season in your life, His promise is He is going to bless you. When you find yourself in that season of suffering, and perhaps you're there right now, I want you to be able to remember this passage to encourage yourself. I hope that you took the time while I was talking to to write down each one of those six bits of advice from Peter. And then I want you to be sure that this is going to pass. This is going to pass. It is going to pass. You leave here today and you tell yourself, this is going to pass. This is going to come to an end. This is going to change. And when it does, a blessing is coming my way. God's going to bless me. Tell yourself that right now. I mean... Every person in this room that's suffering, I want you to stop right now and I always want you to say, we're going to say it together. God's going to bless me. Say it right now. One, two, three. God's going to bless me. Say it again. God is going to bless me. Every person that's suffering right now, you say that. God is going to bless me. I'm going to come through this and God has a blessing for me. I want to pray for you today. First of all, all of you that would say, I am suffering, I want to see your hand. I'm suffering. Come on, raise them up. I'm suffering. I'm not going to embarrass you. I just want you to raise your hand. I want you to acknowledge the fact that you're in a season in your life is not comfortable, it's not fun. But you are suffering. I want to see your hand. I am suffering. You are saying by raising your hand, you're saying, I am suffering. Please pray for me. Okay, that's all you're saying. And I'm going to do that right now. God, you know my heart in this. Many times you have taught me and continue to teach me that what it means for deep to call to deep. We cannot understand or empathize with the suffering of people unless we have suffered ourselves. But when we have, we do. Lord, I ask right now. that your word that you have given us would get from our head to our heart these that are suffering Lord let them get it in their spirit that there is coming a season of blessing how and when I don't know what it's going to look like I don't know but from your word to them if they suffer for your cause for your glory for your kingdom they're going to be blessed so today I pray for them I have to pray God 
even if it is against your will, I got to pray this way because I'm human. I got to pray, God, that you'll heal them today, right now, because it might be your will. And I don't want to miss that chance. I got to pray it, even if it's not your will, even if what they're going through has to last a little while longer. I'm still praying it. I got to. I love them. They're my family. So I pray for healing. I pray for doors to open. I pray for direction to be given. I pray, oh God, that they will not walk through this in silence. For even when you're with us, sometimes you are quiet. But I pray, God, that they would hear you. That you'd speak to them, that you'd nudge them, that they would sense your nearness in this season of suffering. Pray for your comfort and your peace and your rest in the name of Jesus. Now I ask the second question. I don't want you to raise your hand on this one. I just want you in your heart to do so. If you would say, I am suffering. And I think it's for doing good, but I'm not sure. Because here's that part where before we wrap it up, I do want you to allow the Holy Spirit to examine your heart. Perhaps it is that you are suffering for doing something good, but there is that chance that you're suffering because of something else. Sin. Bitterness. Unforgiveness. Something else in your life that is keeping the wellspring of the Spirit of God from flowing in your heart and it's making you ill in spiritual ways, in physical ways, in financial ways, in mental ways. I want you to examine yourself right now and better yet, I want you to pray, Holy Spirit, is there anything in me that's causing this suffering? Is there something that I'm supposed to be learning is there something that I need to repent for is there some way that I need to change is there something that I need to do God if my suffering is a result of my own making would you show me right now because I truly am wide open to hearing that I want to repent I want to confess I want to move on and thirdly Those that would say, I am suffering. I have ran the check. And in pride, you know, without being prideful, I have repented for anything that that the Holy Spirit brought to my mind. And I just don't see this being the result of anything I have done. I am open to that, but I, I don't see that being the reason. I, I only, the only thing I can imagine is this is because... I'm doing something good and I'm being tested or I am being used in some way so I am suffering and this word today is mine and I I choose to let this word encourage me if that's you you say I've ran the check it's my word I'm in the season And I trust God. He's going to walk with me. And I'm going to hang on to Him. This is my word today. I'm wrapping my arms. I'm wrapping my spirit around these words. And these words will be my encouragement today. I claim this word from Jesus. Every person in the room that would say that, I want you to throw both your hands up in the air. Say, this is going to be. This is going to be. I've been suffering. And this is going to be my word. I choose this as my word. Amen. I see those hands. During this last song, I want you to spend a few minutes right there walking through this message, walking through these altar challenges. And wherever you find yourself, I want you to stop right there and I just want you to pray. And I want you to listen to the Holy Spirit. 
And even if some of you have to leave here today still suffering, I pray it isn't the case. But even if some of you have to leave here today still suffering for a time, I want you to carry this good news with you that you're better off suffering with Jesus and that he is going to bless you. Lead us in the song and just pray right there where you're at. Hey, thanks again for stopping by our YouTube channel. Go ahead and subscribe right now so that you don't miss any of our sermons or any of our online content. And if you want to know more about Trinity Fellowship and everything that we have to offer, then go to our website at trinitynwa.com or hit us up on any one of our social media platforms at Trinity NWA. We hope to see you here soon.